We've all seen pictures of a newborn baby, unborn baby, sucking its thumb in the womb. So why does it take the average newborn baby about eight weeks before it can do the same? In our lab, we have been studying arm movements in newborns, and we find that babies are very capable of moving their arms in a sophisticated way. Actually, our newborns are born with very unfortunate body proportions that make the coordination of movements difficult. First of all, to accommodate the large human brain, babies are born with a head a quarter of their total body size. So imagine having to go around your daily business with a head the size and weight of a watermelon on your shoulders. Secondly, to make up for the fact that we don't have any fur to keep us warm, our newborns are born quite chubby. And add to this the fact that we all have been floating in a watery environment for the past nine months, and you end up and without being capable of producing muscles strong enough that can cope with gravity, and you end up with the recipe for disaster when it comes to the controlled coordination of movement. So, although our babies look clumsy, that doesn't necessarily mean that, they, that their movements can be dismissed as just excited threshing of the limbs. Like I said before, in our lab, we've been studying arm movements from newborn babies, and we find that they actually can control these arm movements quite precisely, and that, these, and that they are under visual control from the start. And that is very important for the later development of eye-hand coordination. So we have seen that newborns move their arms more when they can see them. And when we attach small weights around their wrists, effectively pulling the arms away in the direction of the toes, away from the face, then they resist the weights and keep their arms moving in front of their face to be able to see them. Also, when we put the newborns in a dark room, only allowing them to see their own arms in a narrow beam of light, we see that the babies find this spot within half a minute and keep their arms there, showing that newborn babies learn extremely fast. And these findings actually have implications for the way we treat our newborn babies. All outdated theories dictate the view of the newborn baby as helpless, uncommunicative little creatures, incapable of producing anything more than involuntary, reflexive, and purposeless movements. An unresponsive baby, endless crying, sleepless nights, uh, four-hourly feeds. No wonder that many parents, new parents, become desperate and find the first few months of their baby's life hard and undeserved work. And then it's good to know that newborn babies are very interested in watching colorful, high-contrast pictures, that they are fascinated by the human face, that they can swipe at toys suspended from their cot, and that they can recognize both sounds, smells, tastes, voices and songs, even from the fetal period. And realizing that your very own newborn baby is a capable individual that you can relate to and play with from day one should make those early weeks less of a strain. Many new parents are warned not to interfere in their baby's development. And they're told that they shouldn't try to speed up the baby's development. And this mindset dates from the late 1800s, where most people believed that 
our genes determine who we are, and that uh, child development occurs independently of the amount of stimulation a baby receives. Even today, in our part of the world, we are told that it's harmful to hasten development, and that child development will and shall occur naturally. So our babies have to learn to roll over by themselves, and they are not supposed to support their own weight before they can sit or stand on their own. This is to avoid back problems and O legs or bow legs like a cowboy. Meanwhile, in other parts of the world, in most other parts of the world, early stimulation is considered essential for development. And they practice early stimulation in the form of baby massage and baby gymnastics. Mothers in Kenya, Cameroon, Mali, India and Pakistan are convinced that they have to teach their babies all the motor milestones, as well as how to use a spoon and go to the toilet. And as a result, babies who grow up in these cultures where early stimulation is thought to be so important, they are much ahead in their development than our babies. And usually, these babies are fully potty trained by the time they're one year of age. The brains of young children are very malleable, which means that they easily adapt to what is happening around them. Modern research shows that early, early stimulation also speeds up develop brain development. We use EEG technology, which allows us to pick up electrical activity from the baby's scalp. And we find that the neurons, and especially the connections between neurons, increase in number and become more specialized as the baby develops new skills and becomes more mobile. <coughs> Initially, babies are only capable of lying flat on their backs, staring up at the ceiling. And during those early few months, they, are, they don't need to be able to perceive uh, direction and speed of motion. However, we see that only after a few weeks of crawling experience, babies are, process this kind of information much faster, and they're able to differentiate between different uh, visual motion So changes in locomotor abilities trigger brain and cognitive behavior. So travel really seems to be broadening the mind. But this means that we need to stimulate our babies and challenge them from the day they are born. They need to get the opportunity to explore the world using their bodies and all of their senses, indoors and outdoors, and in all kinds of weather. The brains of young babies are very malleable, which means that they easily adapt to things that are happening around them. And when the networks are not used, they will disappear. And Research on language development shows this very clearly. Babies across the world are, when they're very young, sensitive to all the sounds produced in all the languages all over the world. But by the time they're eight months of age, they've lost this ability. So Chinese babies, for example, they hear the difference between the R sound and the L sound when they're four months of age. But by the time they get older, they have lost this ability. So the, and this is what we mean when we say that um, you, the, the, the use it or lose it principle. The neural networks in the brain stay 
when they are used. But when they're not used, they disappear to make place for other networks that are being used. Since so much is happening in the brain during the first three years of life, it's easier to promote learning and to prevent problems when children are very young. Toddlers can't be held responsible for their own learning. So it's up to us adults to see to it. It's actually quite easy to teach a two-year-old both to swim and to read, but they need to have access to water or letters. And potential problems are likely to manifest themselves in the rapid development during the first two years of life. And then it's very important to deal with these problems immediately, rather than hoping, rather than to wait and see, uh, to cross our fingers and to hope that the child will grow out of it. It's very, very important that all our babies and young children have access to as many and as varied experiences as possible, so that they can explore the world around them and everything in it, using their whole bodies, all of their senses, language, and through relationships with meaningful people. In that context, many people worry about the time toddlers spend behind the screen. In my opinion, it's not so much about what the children are doing during screen time, it's more about all the things they should be doing instead. During the first three years of life, the brain's infrastructure is formed. The neural networks in the brain go from faint and windy trails in the forest to high-speed motorways. Instead of underestimating our babies, we should treat them as competent individuals with a huge potential for learning. Thank you.